This screencast covers the material from Module 2, Lesson 25, where we use various strategies to uh, estimate the quotients of numbers with decimals. And whenever we have decimals involved, we have to think about where those decimals are placed. Okay, each of these problems will have a unique strategy. We have to be flexible in thinking about these. And the first thing I notice is I have a decimal in my divisor. And sometimes it's easier to work without the decimals. And one way to do that is to put things in unit form. So I'm just going to rewrite my dividend uh, into unit form, which would be 324 hundredths. That's one of our strategies we can use. Now we're going to look and at our divisor here. And as usual, I'm going to round my divisor. I'll round it to the nearest 10, and that becomes 80. When I look at that, I see this 32 and this 8. That's a combination I like to work with, because 8 times 4 is 32. So I'm going to now round my dividend. So I'm going to have 320 hundredths. divided by 80. Okay, that's simple enough because uh, then I'm going to take it 320 hundredths divided by 10 divided by 8 and that would be 32 hundredths divided by 8 which would equal 4 hundredths. And now I'll put four hundredths in standard form. And I'll write my answer right there. Four hundredths. Let's look at the next one. This one we have a decimal, but we notice that my dividend is greater than my divisor. So I'm just going to uh, look at this and do it uh, in a more traditional form. We're going to kind of almost ignore that decimal. So let's round my divisor first. So 61 rounds to 60. And I'm going to look at that. Well, that's 361 and 2 tenths is really close to 360. So we'll now write this as 360 divided by 10 divided by 6. And 360 divided by 10 is 36 divided by 6. And our rounded quotient is 6. Let's do a few more examples. As you can see, both of these problems were done in very different ways, and each one of these could be done in ways other than what I've demonstrated here. But again, we try to be flexible with our thinking. I'm, I'm going to do C a couple different ways. I'm going to start with uh, changing it to uniform, just like we did with A. So 700 or 7 and 15 hundredths is 715 hundredths. I'm going to round my divisor 31 to 30. I'm going to think of my facts 3, 6, 9, 12. 7 is pretty close to 6, so I'm going to round that to 600 hundredths. And 600 hundredths divided by 30 equals 20 hundredths. 20 hundredths in standard form is 20 hundredths. I could also call that 2 tenths. Now another way to do this is to take this, we're going to round it and decompose it. So I'm going to look at this as uh, 7 and 15 hundredths and that's going to be divided by 30 and then I'm going to decompose my 30. I'm going to decompose it this way. Now I'm going to round my 7 and 15 hundredths to something that's easily, easily divisible by 3, and that would become 6. So I have 6 divided by 3 divided by 10. 6 divided by 3 is 2 divided by 10 equals 2 tenths. All right, let's go on to the next problem.
I have 85 and 2 tenths. Change colors here. So 85 and 2 tenths divided by 31. So I'm going to first round that uh, divisor to 30. 85 is uh, greater than the 31, so we don't have to worry about place so much. And now 85 is very close to 90. And 90 is divisible by 30. Not a problem. So let's go and 90. I'm going to decompose divided by 30 this way using the 10 first. And 90 divided by 10 is 9 divided by 3 equals 3. Let's do one more example and then we'll uh, take a look at one of the problems, word problems from the homework. Okay, in this problem they tell you to estimate the quotient in A and then use that estimated quotient to estimate B and C. First thing we might notice about this is our divisors are identical, no difference whatsoever. Our dividends have the same digits, but the decimals are in different places. B has no decimal, and since there's no decimal, we place the decimal to the right of the 6. Okay, I have a few strategies I can use here. I'm going to take uh, this one, and I'm going to round that divisor. Then I'm going to decompose it so that we can work with basic facts. So I'm going to round 36. That rounds to 40. I'm going to look for something that works well with a uh, 7. Uh, that's close to 7, but works well with a 4. And that would be 8. So now I'm going to decompose my divisor. 8 divided by 4 divided by 10. 8 divided by 4 is 2 divided by 10 is 2 tenths. So I have an estimated quotient of 2 tenths. Let's take a look at this one, the second one, B. We'll notice that the dividend is 100 times greater, right? Because that decimal is now behind the 6. That's two places, so that's 100. So my answer should be 100 times my 2 tenths. So if I change it to 100 times 2 tenths, well I have to move it over two decimal places to the left. So 2 tenths, I move it to the ones, that's one decimal place. I move it to the tens, that's two decimal places. So the estimated answer here is 20. Let's take a look at this one. If we look at my original dividend, we're over there, we have moved it one place over. That means my answer, my dividend rather, is 10 times greater. Therefore, my answer needs to be 10 times greater than my original estimate for A. So 10 times greater, we move it one place to the left. We go from the tenths to the ones, and we get a two. Okay, let's look at that word problem. Okay, let's look at this word problem from the homework. It's a little bit complicated. There's a lot of questions and a lot of parts of it. And what you do in one part, of course, will influence what happens next. I'm going to give you a little hand with this and just offer some strategies and some approaches that you may or may not have thought of. All right, so Carter drank 15 and 75 hundredths gallons of water in four weeks. He drank the same amount of water each day. We have three questions. One. Estimate how many gallons he drank in one day. Estimate how many gallons he drank in one week. And about how many days altogether will it take him to drink 20 gallons. Okay, so let's start with the first one here. We first have to find out how many days are in, excuse me, wrong tool, how many days are in four weeks. And we should know that there's seven days in a week. And we know that four times seven equals 28. So we're going to take our whole, which is 15 and 75 hundredths, and divide it by 28. Since we're estimating, we want to round this to a nice easy number to work with. And of course we know that 28 
rounds to 30. So we're going to have our 15 and 75 hundredths divided by 30. We want to look at this 3 and we want to look at our values here and find numbers that are easy to work with. Uh, from there you should be able to work it out. You can either change 15 and 75 hundredths to unit form or we can decompose 30 into uh, two steps in a division problem and that way uh, it should be a little simpler. So either way works. Now we want to estimate how many gallons he drank in one week. Well again we're going to start with our original 15 and 75 hundredths. Now we could take the answer from A and multiply it times 7 to get our answer for B or we can simply work with uh, the original numbers and rounding once again. So we had four weeks here and we want to find one week so we're going to have to divide that by four. At this point we can look at our original number here and find uh, a whole number that works easily with four and we can solve that. So either way we can take our answer from A and multiply it by seven or we can just use rounding all over again. Now let's look at C. About how many days altogether will it take him to drink 20 gallons? Well I'm going to give you a hint. The easiest way to do this is figure out how about how many gallons he drinks in a week. Once you have that you need to find out how many weeks it takes him to drink the 20 gallons. Once we figure out how many weeks it takes him to drink 20 gallons, we have to multiply that answer by 7 to get the number of days. Hope that helps with the homework. I hope I didn't confuse you more than I've helped you. But those are some uh, different approaches you can use to solve 4a, b, and c.